Welcome to SBM Studios Podcast, your home for the most insightful interviews featuring Southern Gospel artists and industry insiders. Now, here's your host, Scott Bolden. Well, thank you, Jason, and welcome everybody back to another episode of SBM Studios Podcast. We thank you for joining in. We really appreciate y'all tuning in to our past episodes. This is our 10th episode, y'all, and uh, we really appreciate the support that you've given us. You've shared us around with your friends, and it's starting to pay off. We're growing. We really appreciate it, and I know a lot of y'all have enjoyed the series with Southern Gospel Artists that we have been producing, and today will be no different. We have got an amazing voice joining us today, uh, formerly with the Kingsman Quartet, and the Old Time Preachers Quartet, Bob Sellers. Welcome, Bob. Hey, Brother Scott. Man, I'm thrilled to be here. I didn't realize you had such a cool radio voice. Oh, I don't. No, 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 no. That's my cousin Chris. Well, I don't. That, <laughs> that's my cousin Chris that's got the cool radio voice. <laughs> I just sound straight up redneck. I don't know how you, you guys get that out. I can sing it out, but I can't talk it out no matter how hard I try. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I wish I could put the singing out. <laughs> oh, I thank you for joining us today, Bob. And uh, I've known Bob for uh, quite a while, uh, back in his earlier singing days, actually, uh, in our West Alabama area. And we have several listeners in West Alabama that will be very familiar with Bob Sellers. But we are getting out now, I think, around 35 states and even up in Canada. So some folks listening may not know who Bob is. So, Bob, will you take a moment and kind of uh, introduce yourself to our listener? Wow. I was doing all right you said that. Now I'm going to get nervous. <laughs> well... I, um, I am Bob Sellers. I'm from right here in uh, Pickens County. You're in the big city of Kennedy, Alabama. That's right. And uh, I am I actually have a different address now, but people have known me as Bob from Gordo, Alabama so long. I'm in the big city of Gordo. And it doesn't matter where I go and talk about Gordo. Every time I say Gordo, Alabama, people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's, what's humorous about Gordo? I don't know, but I tell them it's even, uh, they'd laugh even harder if they ever visited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if you've got a maybe Hispanic crowd that knows that is the Spanish for fat. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it's a very skinny, skinny place. Well, <laughs> the place is. The people aren't, but place is. <laughs> oh, no, now, easy now, easy now. Oh. <laughs> uh, but no, I've, I've been here all my life, and uh, I, I sang on the weekend. My, my dad was a banker, and... Um, I kind of followed in his footsteps, steps, didn't listen to his advice, uh, went to University of Alabama, got a, a degree in finance and uh, was a banker myself. And I uh, understand uh, you know a little something about that. I do. I wear that same uh, uniform. Well, how have you kept your hair? Because it got mine. Oh, mine's going back, brother. I'm catching you. Well, just don't. You're on the operation side, right? Oh, yes, sir. I am stay there and not on the sales side and you might <laughs> you might keep what you got left I hear you. but i i did that um uh, worked all week and uh had my own group well i was 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 brought into a group before i wound up having it on my own and um and sang all weekend and that's that's the hardest work i've ever done in my life was working all week and singing all and traveling all weekend yes sir but uh but god blessed and uh, we we uh, we saw souls won and lives changed and uh, people encouraged and um, got got to meet a lot of people in the gospel music industry, if you will, and, and different things. And uh, one of those uh, some of those people I got uh, to know pretty well was the Kingsman Quartet. And growing up, uh, the Kingsman and the cathedrals were always uh uh, the cream of the crop for me, those were my two favorite groups. And of course, Gold City yes. uh, and, and several others. But I, I just loved uh, uh, those styles. Of course, the cathedrals and the Kingsman were totally opposite. They called the cathedral the prestigious <laughs> cathedral quartet. Right. And everything was just so perfectly uh, fine-tuned and, right. and, and polished. And you think of a, a project like Symphony of Praise. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, so you had that side of it, which I love. And then you had the Kingsman, which was just totally opposite, in your face, loud and proud, <laughs> singing three chords in a cloud of dust. How high could the tenor go? I mean, it was breaking glass and right. Ray doing that rhythm bass like uh, nobody else and um, the live albums. So I fell in love with that, that style as well. 
And uh, But having gotten to know the Kingsmen a little bit when I had my own group, which was a capstone quartet. Yes, sir. Uh, they, came, they came to South Alabama to sing one night. I was still working at the bank. I believe it was a Thursday. And uh, they called me and Brian Hudson, who was singing lead at the time, had uh, was unable to make that trip and wanted to know if I'd come fill in. And I knew every Kingsman song anyway. I mean, every quartet sings Kingsman songs. That's right. But um, and, and I knew a lot of their newer stuff, too. And and man, my whole church, half half a Gordo went down to that little church, <laughs> uh, little Baptist church somewhere on that Thursday night and saw me and my my life was just made. I got to sing with the Kingsman, and uh, I was just on cloud nine. But I had no idea that uh, that God had other other plans for me. Uh, I did kind of get burned out on banking. And uh, one time I know I was uh, my wife and I were were praying about uh, maybe maybe just God had something different in mind because uh, my position where I was had gotten really stressful and I tell you what, you better be careful what you pray for because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes he'll answer it with a yes and it'll be something to take you right off guard. And that yes for me was was getting the call a year or so after uh, that, ch- that, that night I got a chance to fill in. Um, they were actually needing uh, a, a new lead singer and, and I got a call and I went and I traveled with them a couple of weeks and I finally... I finally told Ray he was going to have to hire me because the bank was about to fire me <laughs> if I didn't come back to work. <laughs> and uh, I wound up uh, doing that with them for about seven years, and it was a big, big blessing on me. And um, they're still some of my best friends in this world. Yeah. In fact, I, I was sitting in a boat with a fly rod in my hand yesterday, and Ray Reese called, and <laughs> uh, I talked to him once or twice a week probably. And uh, I was thankful we uh, spent – spent that much time together and traveling that close proximity, you know, 200 plus days a year Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and leave too. And, and still everybody still be friends. Only reason I left was because I just need to be home more. I, you know, I never had traveled at that pace and I never moved. I, I was, I was 480 miles from Asheville, North Carolina. So right. I, I made that round trip every week. That's a tough and, commute. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was because uh, you had to go through Atlanta or Chattanooga one Ooh. both either way you went. But uh, no, I I got used to that part uh, after a while. It wasn't the driving that bothered me; it was just being away from my wife and three kids, two hundred sixty, seventy days a year. And I can understand that because I was talking and kidding around, but. I don't really have the chops to probably sing professionally and, 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 and as much as I love it. But even if I did. Well, you um, never know. Uh, you know, I e- never, even if I, I did. thought I would have. Yeah, but even if I did, it would be extremely difficult for me to think about being away from home five nights, you know, five days, five nights a week. That's tough. Yeah, I mean, hey, there's some military guys or gals may listen to this or you know, long haul truck truckers and, and think, well, you bunch of wimps. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I say, yep, I'm a wimp. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> but um, you know, I think God cuts certain people out of a mold yes. for that type of of life. Like somebody like Ray. Speaking of Ray Reese, I mean, 54 years Whew. he's been with the King, just with the Kingsman. He's been singing right longer than that he started when he was 15 ray was the first bass singer from the inspirations mm-hmm. one, of the, one of the first ones a lot of people don't know that yeah but, and, uh, and you know and, and also goes not only are those kind of people gifted and called but i believe highly the spouses also uh, they have to oh, be gifted absolutely. and called because that doesn't work if it's absolutely. just one out of two that's on board you know <laughs> and and let me promise you if the water heater is going to blow up, if the car's not going to start, <laughs> if your son's going to break a leg, uh-huh. if if a grandparent's going to pass away, it's going to happen when you're a thousand miles from home. That's right. Yeah, that's I tough. Mean, that's tough. And, it, and and that and every birthday, every anniversary falls on when you're out of town. Right. And like I said, seven seven years of that was all I could handle. And so we started praying again, and I had never left. Uh, a paying job without having another job lined up. But I'll, I'll tell you this right quickly, and I'm, I'm going to try not to be too long winded here. But, sure. Um, I was in a room uh, doing some painting uh, and I'd been, I'd been in there all day and, and I was just praying about that. It was just really heavy on my heart to, about being home more. My wife and I were praying 
Her her advice to me is always make sure it's a God thing and not a Bob thing. <laughs> Which good I think is pretty good advice. Oh yeah. And uh, but anyway, I was I was cutting up next to the where the wall meets the ceiling. I don't think there was there, there wasn't any molding in this room, but so wall to ceiling, and that line's got to be pretty straight, especially when you get contrasting colors. And but my line wasn't as straight as I wanted it to be, so I started trying to um, figure out different approaches, and I. I learned that if I would look just slightly ahead of the brush and then stop and pause and look, that my line would be straight. And, man, Scott, I got saved on uh, June 6, 1984. And I'll never forget that feeling when when the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart that, that Wednesday night at Revival at my home church. And But the same Holy Spirit that spoke to me about that entered that room just as sure as I'm mm. sitting here in my den right now mm. and said, that's your life. You worried about where you are. You worry about where you've been. You've got to let go of all of that and just put your future in my hand. Oh, that's and good. Your life is going to be just as straight as these paint lines. Mm. And, and, uh, man, I just had a peace come over me and, uh, I came home and shared that with my wife and, Turned in my notice, and man, God is, he's been so fast. I, within two days, I was scared to death. I, I can't lie, man. I, You know, you talk about having faith, but you find out how much you have, really, when the rubber hits the road. Certainly, yes. <laughs> and uh, and I, so I'm not ashamed to admit, I was absolutely scared to death. Within two days of that coming out on Singing News that I was leaving, I had seven job offers. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, and, that's uh, God. Some, some of it was stuff like selling insurance, something I wouldn't have wanted to do in a million years, but it was just like God saying, hello, I told you. That's right. Yeah. You know, That's I, good. I got this. And, uh, I haven't had, uh, lofty goals or aspirations. And, um, uh, you know, I told the Lord if he would, if he would, uh, continue to equip me with the voice and, the, and the health and ability to travel, and uh, and he would open doors that I would that I would go through them, and uh, and he's done that, and I've just I've been blown away these these two and a half almost years that I've been out on my own. Of course, nobody saw this uh, this crazy virus situation oh, yeah. coming, but uh, well, God saw that coming too. Absolutely. And uh, I've been uh, I've been I've been blessed even in that with cancellations left and right in ways that I couldn't have imagined. So again, it's just, uh, it's just small ways that God tells you that, you know, I got this, just, just hang on. And, you know, this too shall pass. One of these days we're going to get back to, to normal again in the world. I hope and pray. Oh, yes, sir. That's right. I, I kiddingly say about November the 4th, everything will, uh, yeah. will, will yeah. get back on the road, but yeah, God's, God's not surprised by any, by anything, any of this. Nope. You're, you're right. And, uh, and he's, he's got everything in control and palm of his hands. Now you mentioned, uh, your wife and be a good time also in your introduction, if you might tell us a little bit about, about that family. I know you're proud of. Well, I appreciate that. And, um, um, People in ministry, their wives are kind of like pastor's wives. They kind of go um, un, 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 a little bit unappreciated, I think. They're kind right. of like that that song, The Wind, Wind Beneath My Wings. And it's just exactly like you said a while ago. You, you could never do it or uh, or try to do it without that support. And I've, and I've seen a lot of guys fall on their face yes. uh, who did not have that support. And I am thankful for a, for a loving and supportive Christian wife. I mean, she, when you're going that much, she's got to be mom and, and, and dad too, and disciplinarian and, and uh, That's right. patching up the boo-boos and, and everything else, uh, uh, getting, getting somebody to help start that car or fix that That's busted right. uh, sure. water heater or whatever the case may be. But, but mine is, um, I've been so blessed, brother. I I told I've, I've, t I've said before that I could come home uh, tonight and and say that you know God has has spoke to my heart and has called me to go live in uh, uh, Alaska and start an Eskimo ministry out of an igloo. And she would sit down and cry her eyes out for an hour or two, <laughs> and then she'd help us. We'd start packing. Oh yeah. Because I, that's just the way she is, and, and and all this, every 
I don't ever remember in my years of traveling um, her ever complaining one time. And man, that's that's just such a huge blessing. It's wonderful. And and that's that's having a career of her own. She's taught sixth grade there at Gordo Elementary for uh, she's in year twenty three right now so uh, she's a teacher her name is kansas just like the state <laughs> i guess that's a story for another time but <laughs> uh and then we have uh god bless us with three uh, we were high school sweethearts we um uh were engaged uh, i guess two years of our college life and uh, then graduated and got married in 2000 and Two years and one day later come our first daughter, and her name is Corley, and she's Mm -hmm. uh, 20 years old, which is hard for me to believe, hard for me to believe, 20, almost and a half years old now, and uh, she's out on her own, independent, and uh, and, uh, then we have Ellie, who will be 17 in November, Yeah, which is really hard for me to believe. (laughs) And um, Ellie is, uh, Corey was always uh, really uh, athletic Mm -hmm. and uh, into sports and and, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, Ellie is our little bookworm of of our kids. And her, uh, she's kind of trying her best to be valedictorian. And and she's had that goal like her whole life, which is crazy to me. She must have got that from her mom because that was... (laughs) That was the last thing on my mind when I was a kid, but, uh, yeah. but she does very well in school and very smart and uh, very uh, down to earth and responsible, man. She's, she's a blessing. And, and then we have the caboose, uh, our son, Will, he came along uh, a little later. He just had a, a birthday this past Saturday, turned 15. And that's my, that's my travel buddy. He yeah. used to just, he used to just hang out with me, but now he goes and he's about, as big as I am, so he helps me out a lot. And uh, that's awesome. Anybody on Facebook sees our our fishing pictures all the time. Oh so yeah, that's, that's, that's my fishing buddy too. That's one good thing about COVID. We've got <laughs> you got some fishing in. We've, we've got to do a lot of fishing. I tell you what, but, uh, that's great. No, God's God's blessed me with a wonderful family. I've got. Uh, uh, I was born in a Christian home. Christian mom and dad. Uh, they live right in front of me. I can I can hit the back of their house with a rock. Oh. And, uh, or I live right behind them one, but, um, uh, and they're in, you know, pretty good health to be, um, uh, early seventies, yeah. but, uh, uh, that's a blessing. And, uh, I'm, I'm just blessed, my friend, just blessed. Yes, sir. And I, I didn't realize we had a couple of things in common there. I didn't realize you and Miss Kansas were high school sweethearts. Me and Janice were the same way. And, um, awesome. Yeah, we started dating in the tenth grade, and she hung with me till I graduated college. I took my last college final exam on May the ninth, and we married on May tenth. You can't get any closer than that. But uh, well, we married on <laughs> on June sixth, uh, but um, I had one more semester to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I told you I wasn't a studious one. <laughs> and then uh, also, uh, of course, I've got one son, Garrett. He's seventeen, so. Uh, got uh, close and he's also a bookworm so we got some things in common in there but uh that's awesome i appreciate you sharing that and uh was thinking back when you were talking and i appreciate you giving me your kind of your roundabout history on on your singing and you were like me you grew up listening to the kingsman and uh mm-hmm. and the cathedrals and and gold city you know that I had a singing family with the champions who had a local regional group as I was growing up, but my, my professional groups, it really got my attention as a youngster were those three. And then I always had an affinity for the inspirations as well. So anyway, uh, cut the my teeth. Bama boys. Oh yeah. Bama boys was the family great band. The Columbians before that. Yeah. Um, but so we have uh, a lot of similarities there, but you spoke about those. And I thought maybe if you would share with us, um, and maybe as you were growing up and, and working on your singing and your styling, uh, maybe some folks that you looked at as far as your heroes or musical vocal influences, maybe you might share with oh, us yeah. who had who had an effect on your life in that way. Well, uh, yeah, it sounds like we had a whole lot in common. <laughs> Um, uh, I was, I was one of those kids who just, who just grew up in it. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of people today don't, um, 
Some people don't know what Southern gospel music is. It always tickles me when you're trying to explain to somebody what you do. <laughs> you have to say, do you know Bill Gaither? There you go. You know, the guy on the video. <laughs> the then they know. <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's the only name in Southern gospel that, <laughs> that, that means anything to average society. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I just grew up in it. I was, I was one of those kids drug all over the uh, countryside for Sunday uh, all day singings and dinners on the ground. Uh, my mom came out of a real musical family. She plays piano by ear, and uh, her brothers and sisters all all played something and sang. And um, her oldest sister, actually, my aunt Dolores, uh, she sang and played piano. I mean, she was one of those Vestal Goodman type, oh. leather long, <laughs> throw it back. I mean. The the uh, beehive hairdo and everything. Oh. I mean, she was the picture of Southern gospel music, and uh, I can just remember her playing the piano and that hair just shaking. And the whole <laughs> piano just. I mean, it's a wonder it didn't walk around. She just beat the keys off of the thing. That's awesome. And uh, so I love that. Every time she would come around, there would be singing involved, and I can remember a lot of that. And uh, and she sang um, and and played in a in a group. So we would go see them, and then I had a great uncle. One of my dad's um, uncles uh, played uh, and sang in a group. I don't know if you ever remember a group out of Birmingham called the Challengers. Absolutely, I do. You do? I know of them. Well, Tiny Hickman was my great uncle. He was my grandmother's brother. Okay. And uh, so we would would, uh, go around and see them a lot. And, man, I know you can remember this, too. I, I, I can remember them being, you know, at places and just go and, as a kid, my memory is just people packed. I mean, it was oh, yeah. it seemed like they were hanging, uh, you know, standing in the in the windows to yes. to, to get a peek. And uh, I miss those days. Me too. But, but yeah, so it was just it was just a part of my childhood. And and I and I mentioned my mother playing by ear. And uh, we had a we had a radio program down here on Sunday mornings. Joe Brown, yes sir, and hired me uh, in my first quartet, Capstone Quartet, that I wound up owning. Um, uh, would would count down those top forty songs on Sunday mornings down here at um, it was Q ninety four during the week. Uh, my mind has gone blank on what the gospel W R A G W R A G exactly right. <laughs> yeah, and on Sunday mornings they they played those gospel songs and Mom would hear one she loved and uh, she'd sit down at her piano and peck and hunt around a little bit and then just take off playing it. Mm. And it wouldn't be long before she knew all the words, but she needed to sing melody or she would throw her playing off uh, when she played piano. Right. So that left my older sister, Stephanie, uh, to sing the, the high harmony and, and me to sing whatever was left. And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what it was called, what the part was. We just had to do it like mom was telling us to do it. And, and my mom is a stickler. I mean, we had to do it right. And I'm thankful for that now. Oh, yeah. And uh, because that's what really developed um, my ear, especially, and, and I didn't, I never even had a clue how how special of a gift that was un- until I had a quartet of my own. You start looking for singers and, and realize that most people don't hear musical parts that well. That's right. Yeah. And uh, so, so I'm thankful for that for that upbringing. And so, my mom is my mom and the good Lord is the only thing that's I've ever known about singing a gospel song. <laughs> only, only training I've ever had, and I always give her credit for that. And I hit a stage when I got real shy. People, <laughs> people laugh at that today, but uh, I wouldn't have gotten in front of a crowd with a gun to my head. Mm. And uh, when I was twelve, thirteen years old, and nobody I graduated high school with had any idea I sang, had ever sung, could carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> And uh, I guess I guess I was probably 19 or 20 years old when I got back into it, and that was at the uh, urging of my mother-in-law, uh, who's gone on to be with the Lord now. But uh, I was I was at um, my future wife's house, and they were cleaning out her bedroom and had drug a bunch of Rubbermaid boxes or something out from under the bed that had accompaniment mm-hmm. cassettes in them. I said, "Hey, I know that one. I know that one. And my mom and sister used to sing, we used to sing that one." And <laughs> That was a mistake because uh, my mother-in-law, Becky, once she heard that, I mean, it was like a shark in bloody waters. I was going to do a special uh, on Sunday morning or bust, you know. And uh, so she really prodded me. And 
I did a little, I did a little uh, project, a little CD, and that that she funded, and so I give her a lot of credit for me getting back yeah. involved in gospel music. But um, but it's it's been it's been a blessing, you know. There's a lot of there's a lot. Of, I I actually had a guy, uh, a soul on the street, I hadn't seen in a number of years, and. He said, well, I, you, you just, uh, what are you doing now? And, 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 he, and he said, well, you just, I guess you made enough money with the Kingsman that you just retired now, right? <laughs> That's a good one. That was the exact reaction I had right there. <laughs> I know about uh, those Southern Gospel salaries. <laughs> man, I, uh, I took a, I remember the first, you know how you get those Social Security statements in the mail, I guess, once a year or so. Right. And uh, I remember looking at one of those. I think a year after I'd been, <laughs> and uh, and it was like it was like a twenty five thousand dollar difference mm-hmm. uh, from from when I was in the banking business to when I was in the singing <laughs> business, and it, not to the good. It was twenty five right. less. Right. <laughs> but uh, but you know nobody nobody sings gospel music for the money. That's right. It's a it's a calling, or it should be. I'm it sure you be. have. I'm sure you have. Uh, instances where maybe it's not and there's other motives that get people in it but um it, it should be a calling and if it is a calling then you're going to give it your best and, and and try to you know go wherever god will lead and open doors and and uh you know honor him through that that gift and that and that calling that is that is placed in your life and it's you know like I said, it's a lot of more things that uh you can do uh, to make more money or, or, or whatever. But uh, I, I heard somebody smart to me say, Hey, the rewards are, are not in this life. And that's right. You know, that's, that's, that's our hope. Amen. Amen, brother. Um, well, I appreciate you sharing that. And yeah, we also have that in common as far as the family influence. I mean, I, I did have some Southern gospel folks that I mean, not when I was before my voice changed, I was going to be the next Brian free, but then that got messed yeah. up. So, you know, that, that, that didn't work, yeah. but, uh, weren't we all, uh, but, uh, his but, yeah. didn't change. And his happened. didn't change still hasn't, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. And then of course my family, my uncle Jake and Neil and Chris, that's the ones that really drove it in, uh, for me. So, uh, yeah, we got that in common, too. Uh, awesome. So thinking about, you know, I, I told you before we got on here that, uh, you know, I, I have a little envy. Um, and I know that the grass is always greener and all that. But I've always, you know, my, my childhood dream, I was weird uh, compared to most kids. You know, my dream was exactly to sing. And, and that never did really come in fruition and I'm, I'm you know I'm envious to a point when when I uh, see folks getting to do that not in a bad way it's just you know I'm proud for them but uh, it's just something I always would uh, love to experience and then you were blessed to experience with some of your heroes and, and joining on the road with like Mr. Ray Dean Reese and I thought maybe uh, real quick if you wanted to maybe share in your you said I think you were on the road seven years with them and you got seen in a lot of different places and experience a lot of different different to atmospheres what's some uh, one or two of your favorite memories from the road on your time traveling with the kingsman well it would have to be probably uh surrounding national quartet convention my first national quartet convention mm. um i i was a little bit different in that i didn't really grow up with that dream mm-hmm. and once i started singing uh, on a regional basis, I didn't really aspire to that because, I mean, everybody's mom tells them how wonderful they are. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, and the church members any, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't have any idea uh, what type or whatever a talent. And I, and I still don't feel like I have enough to have sung with the Kingsman Quartet. It's a very uh, humbling thing to me to think of uh, some of the shoes that I certainly didn't feel, but I, I got I got privileged to stand in the same spot as as they did. But um, so it, it just happened for me a little bit differently. But once I did start singing, there was a really I mean I can remember the first. Uh, national quartet convention I went to, and that was, I mean, when it was a big deal, right? It was in Louisville, 
and there were uh, between 15 and 20,000 people mm-hmm. packed in that uh, arena there. And I can just, I can just remember seeing those folks walk out on stage and thinking, just one time, just one shot, man. I wish, I wish our quartet could go down there and sing to all these people. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? And uh, and then and then here I I wind up singing with the Kingsmen and and get an opportunity to do that. That as far as venues and and moments, that was that would be number one for me. And I know it is because. Um, I guess, I guess God has blessed me. I don't really get, uh, nerves uh, when it comes to singing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more nervous now singing at my home church in front of 20 people. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's, that's the most nerve wracking time now. It's kind of strange, but it's different at your first national quartet convention. That's the most nervous I've ever, I mean, when Bill Gaither, all these gospel heroes that you watched on TV growing up or sitting, you know, all around the stage and, and everybody's critiquing everybody. Sure. And, um, and you want to be your best. Oh, and by the way, we were making a live recording that that night and I had to come out and, uh, I think it was like, it may have been actually September the 11th and we, and, and, and we cut that live version of land of the free. Uh And, uh, man, that's awesome. It. I can tell you it was God that let me remember all my lyrics because I couldn't, I couldn't have even told you my name. Right. But that's, that's the most nervous I've ever been. I remember having cotton mouth and I was, I couldn't quit yawning. And I've read that about stroke victims that that's a, and, and I don't, that's, that's, that's something to do with your nerves when yeah. you just can't stop yawning. And so I was doing that and, uh, literally, literally thought I was going to vomit. That, that's that. And that's the only time. That I've ever done that. Wow! So, so that's that kind of ranked it. number one. Yeah. And then, and then one of the other uh, neat experiences is also around that same week. Uh, Bill Gaither used to come, and he would assemble a choir. Right. And uh, so there in um, in the in the in the arena, uh, in front of all those people, you were kind of like a, a part of one of those uh, Gaither tapings, like like. Uh-huh. Like, Tom like he's made stuff. all the, like right. he's made all the money off. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, so that was that was special. I mean, to to be that's awesome. to be seated to be seated on a platform with all of these people that you've seen. I just kind of sit there like, you know, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. I've always said, you know, that one time I would love to stand on that NQC stage, but I can't imagine that if that time came, that it would be. Uh, yeah, I better I better know the lyrics well and have everything oh. down because my brain will quit. I'm sure if that oh, was absolutely. ever to happen. So that's yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, that, that and, and it was a time of year that's the worst for me. My fall allergies are. Worse. I was sick almost every national quartet convention. Well, let me ask you this then, I'll, uh, and then we'll segue into. And I want to talk about your new project that you've got coming out. But I have asked a few of our folks that I've interviewed because that. Talking about my singing, my biggest hindrance is being able to um, successfully and regularly place the tones correctly in the mask because I have 365 day a year chronic sinusitis. I mean, I am constantly always stuffed up. So to say that, and, and you talking about being your worst time of the year, what's some of your tricks and remedies that you use because you rely on that voice. You can't take a day off because of the voice. So what do you do? Boy, I tell you what, <laughs> it is, uh, I have compared it to the, to the thorn in Paul's flesh. It's, I'm right there with you, brother. I have a, I have a deviated septum. I remember my uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor had an intern working with him that day that he x-rayed mine or whatever. And he said, come here, look at that. I want you to list textbook. <laughs> That's not good. I mean, it looked, it looked like a crooked road. I mean, it was like Z, like a S or what. And so that's the, my, the left side. I almost just get no airway unless everything is just perfect. Uh-huh. Uh, so I, man, I struggle with that too, but knock on wood. I, I don't now as bad as I, when I was with the Kingsman, I stay, I was either, I was either getting over a sinus infection or just getting one. And mm-hmm. that's the same thing doctor told me chronic sinus yeah, infection. Yeah, that's and, me. Uh, you know, the Claritin and Zyrtec and Zizol, 
I take one every day, but I don't know that any of them will help. Yeah. I've had the surgeries. But, I've taken every nose spray. I've had allergy shots. Well, see, I've never yeah. had the surgeries, even though they've been highly recommended. I'm, I'm just chick. I know uh, I've talked to so many people who've had it and still have problems. Just That's like, me. Just like you. Yep. Um, you, you probably remember brother Daryl Burkett, oh, yeah. uh, a pastor up around Vernon. He, I forget how many times he had had it and, uh, and he had, and he still suffered. So I was talking to him and talk, I know Daniel Riley, uh, had it and, and really suffered with getting his tone and placement back. Mm. And so, I, you know, if, if they could, if they could come out with one and, and guarantee that I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, gonna only be sick once the blue moon after i had it I, I probably would sign up but they can't do that but yeah i, I the biggest thing for me i found and especially as you age you have to pay attention to this man when i was when i was i say a kid when i first got started with a quartet i'd, I'd go we'd have a homecoming somewhere with a giant potluck meal mm-hmm. i would get so stuffed i would eat everything there it didn't matter if it was dairy caffeinated yeah. chocolate right whatever and i would come out and just sing the roof off you know it nothing nothing bothered me but it's not that way now that i'm almost 45 <laughs> and uh so for me absolutely above everything else is rest okay the, fir- the very first thing to go in me is my voice mm-hmm and um, so number one on my priority is rest. Number two would, would have to be water. Uh, I've learned to I've learned to drink a lot of water before I sing. I, I don't do these. I'm I'm not knocking them. I probably should, but a lot of people have these routines with vocal warm ups mm-hmm. and exercises and all that. I've never really gotten into that. I just. I just drink a lot of water, try to, uh, you know, clear, clear as much as that I can out of there, uh, without getting too graphic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get anything on and, the microphone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do do a, a allergy pill uh, okay. every night, but there's just no magic know. solution. That's for sure. No, it's not. Yeah. You just have to, when, when you're like, uh, uh, you and I are, and you and you battle it all the time. You just have to, de- you just have to learn to deal with it. That's right. And I have learned some cheats as far as some things to do, but uh, as far as the I singing this, part, what, what's what's funny uh, or ironic, I guess you'd say, sometimes when I'm when I'm really sick, I think I actually learn to sing better than ever hmm. because you can't just. And, and I've made this mistake. You can't just scream through it or you'll blow a gasket yeah, and, yeah, and, right. and come down with laryngitis. Mm-hmm. Um, so you learn to, you learn to do more things proper yeah. and sing around it instead of through it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll sing better for a few weeks <laughs> and then I'll get back to screaming, <laughs> doing it Kingsman style. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, I tell you what, we keep on having these kindred spirits. Uh, I didn't know we had so much in common, but uh, <laughs> I tell you what, why don't we take it here and uh, we'll make a transition. I know that you have a new project that you've been working hard on for uh, a while and you are ready to put it out there for release and I, you, I have had the privilege to preview that and listen to the tracks, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought we might talk about that for a little bit. So why don't you start us off and let's discuss that new project you got? Well, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you, glad you liked it. Uh, I hope you do, because I, <laughs> I put a, I put a whole lot of work into it. I'm sure it doesn't sound uh, near as good as uh, the work I've put into it, but. Um, <laughs> It's been a it's been a labor of love, as they all are. Sure, you know you go to you go to somebody's record table or, or whatever and ask them what's the best, and they always point to the latest. That's right. You know, they, want, <laughs> they want to sell those latest, and, and you know, and it's not. Uh, I remember the first time that ever happened to me. It was funny. I was just a kid at uh, at National Quartet Convention, Daryl Stewart, mm-hmm. and I said, and I asked him what what was there. You know, and, and and now I see that as just such a silly question. Well, what's your, what's your best? I wanted to buy one. What's your latest one? He just, I mean, he didn't bat an eye. And I can remember thinking, I don't know how genuine that was. Yeah. 
<laughs> but the reality is you always shoot for being a little bit better than anything you've ever done before. Oh yeah, sure. And, uh, and I think, I think, thank God I've, I've been able to do that with the good Lord's help on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's, it's the first, I say real, um, real, uh, album I've done since I've been out on my own as far as, you know, hunting, hunting songs that I wanted to do, uh, getting, getting my, all my tracks, uh, uh, done the way I wanted them, the arrangements and, and that sort of thing. And just, you know, top to bottom, uh, doing it, putting it together. And I'm, I'm, I'm tickled to death with it. I, it's about two years too late, but, uh, another strange, um, ironic twist to COVID is I probably wouldn't have it done now if it wasn't, if it wasn't for that. Sure. Cause you just, you just get so busy. Yeah. Um, and I've seen that, a lot of artists that's kind of, they've kind of worked on kicking out some projects during this COVID time. I've seen that being the, the trend. Yeah. It, it, it's a, it's a catch 22 type thing. You know, you got all these cancellations going everywhere and, you, and then you're going to go out and spend thousands <laughs> of dollars on a, on a recording, you know, <laughs> right. but, uh, you, you just hope that it'll, <laughs> it'll pay off in the long run. But, uh, but yeah, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have found the time yeah. uh, to do it. And um, I worked with a with a young man named Josh Jenkins in um, in Marstown, Tennessee. Okay. He is uh, he is just uber talented. Makes me sick. <laughs> what really makes me sick is he's just like twenty eight years old. Oh wow! So he's just starting out. He doesn't he doesn't even know how good he is. <laughs> in fact, I put in my liner notes when I was uh, doing my acknowledgments. And thanking him, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to afford you much longer. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's probably the case. He's, he's probably going to be a, a household name in, in gospel music one of these days. He's very good and uh, just a great Christian young man. Uh, lost both his parents at a young age, and uh, so he's kind of had to grow up quick. But yeah. uh, appreciates life and uh, and is and, and serves the Lord. He plays. Bapt, uh, plays piano at Marshtown Baptist Church and just a good kid and just man plays everything does everything with uh, you know got everything right there in his home for a studio so I did it all up there with him and then I've got other people uh, helping me like uh, uh, Corey Pearson of the Diplomats oh, a yes. friend of mine He's uh, Corey, awesome. Corey's done my mixing and um, Jeremy Peace uh, has mas- mastered it for me now, and uh, it's a it's not all new song. It's kind of a it's kind of a, a, a mix. Uh, there's uh, a, a classic uh, song or two or on there, sorta, and uh, and there's a brand new, and there's some that's not really new. That's but people may not have heard a whole lot, and uh, and then there's. I got a couple of Kingsman songs on there that I, that I did with with the guys. Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm tickled about it. I'm, I was hoping for a uh, September 1st release. I've kind of run about a week or two late here, so we're going to see how that goes. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm shooting for. I've been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river I ain't the same The prodigal's return All my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday's gone All my sins Hey folks, this is Scoot Shellnut with the Dixie Echoes, and you're listening to my buddy Scott right here on SPM Studios podcast. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I when I was giving it a listen, I yeah, I, I did see it had a lot of good variety. I thought in the song mix, there was a couple of things that you know some listeners recognize even from crossover. You know, uh, you may, some folks have heard some of these songs on both Southern gospel and uh, contemporary gospel 
radio like uh, all my hope uh, i definitely yep. enjoyed that cut and eye of the storm uh that was another one um that i enjoyed and uh also eye of the storm is one of my favorites yeah, on there yeah it, it's, it was I, good i'm gonna be honest with you i would have never really seen myself cutting that song but i heard i, I tend to be more of a traditionalist but i heard it and uh the more I got to listen to those lyrics, man, oh yeah, and especially with this fire stuff going on, man, that's a great song. I don't, I don't care what box it fits in. It's just a great song. It is, and it's really humorous to me um, because now my household is, it's, <laughs> of course, you and I live in uh, Alabama where you can have households divided on college sports, but in my <laughs> house, in my house, when it comes to music, we're kind of sort of uh, a house divided. Now I. I don't get into the music wars. I, I love all Christian music as long as it's biblical and as long as it's well done and it has, you know, a gospel centric message. I love it all. But I'm Southern gospel and hymns. I mean, that's what I grew up. It's what I cut my teeth on. And, and that's where I lean. Now, my wife Janice, on the other hand, really leans more into the um, contemporary is such a wide, but, you know, like the more popular uh, stuff that you would hear. Mine on, too. On, on, on contemporary radio. So what's funny to me is, is I heard some of the songs like All My Hope and of course Gold yes. City cut that too and then I of the Storm and uh, Mr. Clayton and Triumph had cut that too and I did not really, I, I didn't, I just don't give a lot of ear and listen to the other genre unless something really catches me and it wasn't until I really bore down and listened uh, to Danny and uh, and and uh, Chris sing "All My Hope" and and Clayton sing "Eye of the Storm." That those lyrics is like, oh my goodness, what a song! And so I was mm-hmm. excited when I heard saw those cuts on your project because you're right; those songs are are amazingly strong messages of hope. And uh, that's oh, no that's doubt. that's awesome. And you did a fantastic job on both of those covers, oh, and you, also enjoyed your cover of the one that uh, Guy Penrod sang with Gaithers. The uh, Knowing what I know about heaven. Oh man, that was a great cut. I enjoyed that I one as love well. That song. I, I, I was I was eight. I remember looking at my phone and uh, because I was wanting to get home uh, in time for a service. I was eight hundred and fifty something miles from home when my grandmother passed away, mm-hmm. and I only had one set of grandparents that I ever knew. And my grandfather, he was my pastor, and most people have, have heard my, my story with him. He's such a large part of my testimony. He was an alcoholic and, and got saved later in life when he was like 48 years old. Oh, wow. And, and later surrendered to preach. So by the time I came along, only only past, uh, only grandfather ever knew was my pastor. Oh, wow. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. God just did an amazing turn in his life. And uh, uh after that, my dad got saved. So, mm. you know, who knows where I'd be today if, if not for those right. uh, who've come before me, you mm-hmm. know, choosing the Lord. But uh, my, my grandmother, he died in 2000. And then about 15 years later, my, my, grand, my grandmother went to be with the Lord. Of course, I was out on the road. But I did get back in time, just, just in time for her services. And I sung that song mm-hmm. at, uh, at her service. I sung that song and How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. Oh, yeah. I've sung that one uh at a lot of at a lot of funerals um and uh it's it's just such a true song i had a i had a precious um cousin passed away at a very young age of cancer um uh, last year leanne mm-hmm. uh, she was matt daniel i don't know if you know you may have known you didn't know tony mcdaniel sales insurance but i i do know of them i don't know them well but i know you're talking about yeah. yes well, they're my um Second cousins, I guess, and uh, Leanne passed. She used to come to cancer, and I sung that at her service uh, a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yes. know, it's just true. When a, the Bible says, "Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints," so that's right. Um, we wouldn't, and and even even Leanne, as young as she was, forty eight years old, I think, and not even gone a year. Look at <laughs> look at the things that she's missing. Oh yeah, in just in just the year since she left this world, and knowing what we know about heaven, we wouldn't bring them back. No, here. no, we would not bring them back. Uh, no, no, just absolutely. the older I get, I just get jealous. <laughs> right. I mean, really. I mean, I'm not signing up to leave my family and, sure. and leave them behind in, in tears. Well, my wife just got home. I hope she'd cry. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but uh yeah it's it, it's different as a christian as, as you get older you, you right. see things you do you get, get a little bit different perspective you do they're they're a whole lot better off than us and and you know it, it just kind of I, I saw this on this project it's really a project full of messages of hope you know i i'm unique yeah. and odd um you know, I, I listen to projects differently, just like I was I was listening to it, and I was able to pick out your uh, back out back, backup vocals. But um, the thing, this may be odd, but the the song that really was a standout to me that I really enjoyed, you know, a your presentation of the song and then the message in the song is I enjoyed. He has, yeah, that's a great song. It is. That's a great song, man. Uh, Mark Wheeler from uh, Georgia wrote that song and. Uh, we cut that with the old time preachers quartet. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't, I wasn't the, fe- the featured vocalist on the album for that one, but it was my favorite one off that album. Yeah. And, uh, that's just, that's a great song. What a message. We, you know, we mess up a lot, but, uh, he never has, never will. That's right. Well, tell me, uh, before we move on from the project, tell me about your first release from the project. Wonderful story of love. Well, that song is written by Lee Black and a and a lady I know Lee well and another lady from Nebraska, believe it or not, Miss Gina Bo. I haven't uh, I don't think I've ever had a chance to meet uh, Miss Gina, but I, Lee wrote uh, "Battle Cry," which was such a huge song mm-hmm. uh, for the Kingsman. And um, actually, the last Kingsman album that I did, we had this song on hold for. And it did not make the final cut. Of course, you know, when you're with a label group like that, yeah. the group has some say so in it. And then the record company has some sure. more say so. <laughs> yes. It. Yes. I understand. Uh, so it just didn't make the final cut, but, but Lee was uh, gracious enough to let me hang on to that thing, which I've had it now for three years, maybe over three years. And um, it's got a little bit, totally different uh deal message but um it's got a little bit of the feel uh, as as battle cry yeah kind of, kind of along that same rhythm type stuff and i wasn't going for that in fact i really didn't even realize that till this week uh, but i love the message in, in the in the song and it, it's uh it, it just tells what we do go out and sing the gospel which is the wonderful story and right. the, the most wonderful story and um, long as, like I said, uh, the promise I made the Lord, as long as he'll open doors and I've got, uh, mind, voice and, and, and health ability to go and do it. That's what I'm going to do. Sing, sing that wonderful story. So Amen. I hope people get to hear that one on, uh, on radio soon. And uh, I hope they'll like it. I, I like that song. One of, one of, of course, one of my other favorites on it is uh, talking about Kingsman. Uh, my favorite song, it wasn't our biggest song while we were there, but, the, the most favorite song that I was able to cut with them uh, for me was Cost of the Cross. Oh, yes. That's an awesome song. Yes. Um, Christ, uh, Gerald Hill, I believe Gerald's from Georgia, but uh, he and Christy uh, Fitzwater, Christy actually lives in Virginia, and uh, she had emailed me that song after we had um, the 10, the 10 were finalized for our last uh, uh project that i was on with Kingman. yeah and I, I said oh my goodness i love this song look i don't know i don't know how soon we'll be able to cut another one but if you can please let us hang on to that it, it'll definitely be cut number one on the next <laughs> one and uh i even i forwarded it to the other guys and, and shared it with them and, and they all they all kind of agreed but she did something very smart if there's any songwriters out there listening uh, she drove over three hours one night to see us in Pennsylvania, and she handed Ray Reese a CD of that demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and and Ray will he'll absolutely listen to every everything somebody brings in. Okay, great. So he took that thing home, and uh, I guess sometime Monday or Tuesday morning was playing it in the office, and um, his secretary Wendy um, heard it and fell in love with it, and mm-hmm. she had to let uh, Ray's wife. Um, Carolyn uh hear it and she fell in love with it and uh that sealed the deal there. <laughs> That's <I mean>. awesome. <laughs> so uh Ray could pull a string or two. Yeah. So we wound yeah. up putting eleven songs on that recording. Great. Yeah. And uh it's a great song. Course, uh, 
Ray's wife, she passed away before we uh, got the recording finalized. So yeah, that, yeah. that made it a little bit special too, that, that she had loved uh, the demo. So we can always consider that her song, but uh, yeah, I cut it and, and I had uh, Chris Jenkins come in and, and sing. Of course, Chris sang tenor with me at the, with the Kingsman for the biggest uh, part of the time right. that I was there. And just a great guy. Yes, he is. I think, I think one of the greatest tenor vocalists out there, period. And uh, so I had him come in and do the tenor on, on Cost of the Cross. And we we did a little, I did a little something different with the arrangement and ended it big. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the way it turned out. Yes, it was a fantastic cut and solid project, totally. And definitely would encourage our listeners, uh, most of our listeners that's probably catching this podcast also listen to Southern Gospel Radio somewhere, whether it be a local station or uh, maybe a national streaming station. But you can request that wonderful story of love release uh, from the Butler Music Group uh, in the coming days. And we look forward to yeah. hearing that. So I thank you for sharing that. And while we're on this path, because I know we're coming to the end here, uh, Bob, won't you take a second and share how folks can find you, all your social media presences or your website, just anything you'd like to share as far as how they can uh, find you by your your uh, projects and connect with you yeah. online. Yeah. Well, I certainly have a website. It's just bobsellersministries.com. Uh, but, you know, today with the advent of social media, that's, that's where most people stay in touch with me. I've, right. I've got a... I've got a personal Facebook account that um, I don't I don't know if uh, I got room for many more friends on there, but you can follow me on there. And, and right. once you do that, you, we can comment back and forth. Yes. I also have a page, but it's a little bit frustrating, you know, <laughs> an official page. It's a, it's a little bit frustrating because you can't uh, you can't. Uh, comment and such back and forth right. uh, with it uh, like you can a, a personal account. I don't know why that's the case, but um, so my personal account really is, and, and man, I, there's no telling what you'll find on there. We, <laughs> we have a lot of crazy, crazy stuff on there. I sure. try to, I try to do, a, I'm, I'm naturally a little bit of a nut. I <laughs> always have been. And, uh, and, you know, I kind of figure it's enough. Uh, it's enough doom and gloom in the world. That's right. If I can, put a smile on somebody's face and you know, so be it good, good. Thank the Lord for that. But, uh, um, right. so it's, it, it's everything from jokes and to politics and current events and, um, uh, and, um, uh, uh, biblical, uh, discussions and, and that sort of thing on there. So, yeah. and I, and I love, I love the interaction that I have with, uh, I call them my people oh, yeah. on there. Um, you know, Ray, Ray with the Kingsman has always said, they're not, they're not fans, they're friends. And that's, and, right. that's, and that's what it is in gospel music. I mean, it's, uh, we're not on some pedestal and behind the curtain or whatever, you know, you gospel music people, you, you can actually get to know them. And that's, that's one of the biggest rewards, uh, other than seeing someone come to know the Lord That's right. that I ever experienced in this is making so many friends. I remember big Jim Hamill talking about on a live album once that he could go from Asheville to, to California and never have to get a hotel room. But, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if I could go that far, but <laughs> I can go a lot of places and, uh, and but people are, people are very kind and, and gracious and, and welcoming to us. So yeah. keep up with me on there. And of course I'm on the other social media sites as well, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, but I'm going to try to get, try to try to get more involved on um on youtube maybe hopefully within this next year awesome and uh also uh, my my phone number's listed out there uh, my email is listed out there uh, it's just office at bob sellers ministries.com and if somebody wants to find me they can yeah and and i'll say this um uh, and I always emphasize that I'm not knocking the way anybody else does it. I'm just telling you what works for me because I work very hard to keep my expenses low. Right. Um, my overhead low. I've got the, I've got the most, uh, fuel, uh, uh efficient bus in all of gospel music. <laughs> I bet. 
it's a it's a it's a honda civic hybrid <laughs> oh yes oh yeah you're rolling then yeah <laughs> and uh people people say well why don't you get you something bigger to travel in i say because i can get it all in here mm -hmm. and uh, as long as i can that's what i'll be in so you know i if i don't need it i don't right i don't feel really right about passing that expense on to other people so i say all that to say i've been from gosh here to south florida and the everglades and michigan and phoenix and i don't know where all in between over the past couple of years and I, I don't have a set uh charge for for any church uh i just i just have never felt right about about it and that's just the way i do it and uh god is god is faithful to work out the the financial end of it so if somebody's out there listening and um wants to wants to have me at their church I always say it's kind of rude to just show up and start setting up speakers and stuff without an invitation. <laughs> yeah, just ask. Yeah, it need to be asked, right? <laughs> All I got to do is ask. Sure. That's right. Well, I thank you for that attitude toward that, and 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 especially still being uh, friendly to to the churches and well, and, I mean, and God blesses like in that. I said some uh, some people may or, or probably can't afford to do that. You yeah, know, like understood. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a payroll and a, and right. a bus and, and that sort of thing, but it's just the way it's what works for me. That's right. Well, good deal. So folks can look you up and get that information to book you. And uh, thanks for sharing that uh, real quick. I want to just take a second and again, thank our listeners. Um, we can't make this happen without y'all actually listening to us. That that encourages us and helps spread uh, this podcast on the platforms. When they get more popular, they give us a little better uh, listing. So we appreciate that. Uh, for those of you who are listening, you've probably come across this podcast, maybe with a Facebook post or a share. Uh, if you would share that post with your Facebook friends, it helps us a lot to get out there in front of others. Also, when you're listening to it on your favorite podcast platform, you have the opportunity to subscribe or follow the podcast. That means that you won't miss our next episode with our next interview, and we would appreciate that. And finally, you also have an opportunity on most podcast platforms to rate or review the podcast. Again, that helps us. Uh, get out there and share. And uh, we just appreciate it. We've been blessed. We're so thankful for the support that we have from our listeners as we are young, but we are growing and that uh, we appreciate the feedback. But uh, it's kind of like uh, one of our guests said, I think it was Josh Singletary, uh, takes no more effort to share a post than it does to like a post. So if y'all wouldn't mind sharing us, that would be a big blessing to us and will help us keep going on this because uh, same way here, this is a little in-house podcast, no uh, major expenses, and we don't have a budget. We're just kind of laying this out there. So we're relying on you, our listeners, to help us get out there, and we we appreciate the support uh, so much. And, Bob, I do really appreciate you hanging out with us. I thought for closing, Absolutely. closing, if you wouldn't mind, and, and one thing that I enjoy about you, you said, like, you know, you, you, you enjoy humor. You're very humorous. Another thing that we have in common, uh, my household, my wife, myself, and my son are very straightforward, straight shooters. I mean, pretty much uh, we just believe in, you know, not being um, – not being rude, not being overly blunt, not being hateful, but we do believe in speaking straight truth. And, and we believe yeah. in that's the way that we should live. I also pick up that that's your style as well, that you pretty much don't uh, mess around with shucking the corn. And, and I appreciate that with you. And I was thinking about this day and time with the darkness that we face. You know, you've already spoke a little bit about some of the challenges you've had during this time. But we find ourselves in this chaotic time, this divisive time when so many is trying to pull us apart, not only in the mm. secular world, but even within the church. The churches, yeah. th there, there's folks within the church trying to pull us apart. So I thought with our listeners, you might take just a moment and share uh, an encouraging word, uh, maybe uh, maybe some kind of a word of encouragement, uplifting to those who are listening with us as, as we're all going through this time together. Well, you know, one thing I have I have come to learn is that, you know, my buddy Karen Peck had a big song called Everybody's Going Through Something. Amen. 
and it's the truth. Hmm. And you may be, and you don't realize it yet. That's right. Or you may not be, but it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I speak about my granddad so much, and I know probably a lot of the time I was stretched out on the pew and and maybe not paying attention, but yet, yet thankfully, God's allowed me to retain so much of what he said and, and done and, and preached uh, through the years. And I remember one thing he said, he said, uh, uh, life is, life is like a wave. It's, it's up and down. You're either, you're either on your way up or you're riding high or you're on your way down and, and you think you can't get any, any lower. Hmm. But the one thing that's, that's always given, it's going to change. Mm-hmm. That's you, right. Things are going to improve or things are going to get worse. But no matter what the case may be, we just got to hold, uh, speaking of gospel music, hold to God's unchanging hand. Hey, Amen. Um, I told you, I, I shared with you my testimony about uh, surrendering to, to letting the Kingsman go and stepping out on faith to do this on my own. And from that experience in that room that day, I kind of took Proverbs three, five, and six to be my, my ministry motto. Mm. You know, some of my favorite verses, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct a paths. Mm. It doesn't say he'll try. doesn't say he'll think about it. It doesn't say he'll, he'll, he'll make it a little bit better. Now, some versions say that he'll make your path straight. Personally, I prefer for him to direct my path. That's right. You can be on a straight path and you can go all the way to the top. But if God has not directed it and got it in it, then, then, there, then there's no reward in that. That's right. So I, I, I took those verses um, and, and applied them like never before. And, and when I'm out singing and you talked about this project, kind of having the um, overall vibe being one of uh, a message of hope. Yes. It kind of just, it kind of just worked out that way. That wasn't, that wasn't my goal, but I've, I've thought that same exact thing when I'm, when I'm listening to these songs and, and considering these lyrics and um, I, I see songs like I of the storm. And when I close my eyes here, mm. uh, what they mean to people, um, that song, when I close my eyes here was written by a Baptist preacher friend of mine in Jasper, my brother, Daryl Wilson. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, man, it, it says it all, you know, I, in fact, I said it, I said it Sunday night, we had such a great, great service at this church I was at in Tennessee. And I said, Hey, look, if y'all get word sometime or, or, or even tonight that, that this old boy from Gordo, Alabama had made it home, don't cry for me. Hey, uh, check on my wife and kids and uh, hope, hopefully they'll be sad about it, but don't worry about me because I'm saved. I've got an eternal home in heaven. Mm. My church, my, my troubles and struggles and trials and, and knee pain and back pain and, and heartache and more month at the end of the monies, uh, all of that's going to be over. So, and, and that's, that's, that's the message of the gospel. Yes. So, if if I could get that across to anybody and I, and I preach it to myself as much as anybody else, no matter what you're going through, just hang on, just hang on. Just, just, just put your hand in God's hand and he'll trust in him and he'll direct your paths. And, Amen. and you know what, uh, will it be to the way that we would have designed it if we could, or will it? Or will it be to to our timing? Maybe, maybe not. But it'll be perfect That's because right. it'll be His. That's right. And and if we don't believe in that, and if we don't trust in that, then we shouldn't even show up for church. We shouldn't even sing a song. We shouldn't teach a class or preach a sermon or anything else. Mm. And uh, man, His His Word. It's it was. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It's real, man. It's, it's, I try to get that across to my audience. It's not a fairy tale. These these aren't these aren't just a book of stories, man. It, it's the word of God, and it is God. That's right. 
Well, he can take care of all of it. Amen. Amen. Good word, brother. I thank you so much for sharing that. And I do. I thank you for giving me. Looks like we've been chatting now for about an hour and 10 minutes. Time flies when wow. you're having fun. So uh, I guarantee you. But I do thank you for spending the time with me. Maybe it was uh, painless for you. And uh, Oh, absolutely. I, man. I, I appreciate you, Scott, and everything you do to to share the gospel, brother. We're, we're all in this together. That's right. It doesn't matter at, at what level you are. It doesn't matter if you teach, if you sing, if you just open your mouth and use, uh, and use the tongue that God gave you to tell somebody how good, how good God's been to you. We're all in it together. Amen. And, brother. Um, and, and just working together and with each other. That, that's what it's all about. I, I, I guarantee you, I appreciate uh, what you do just as much as you appreciate what I do. Well, thank you, man. That means a lot to me. And who knows, one of these days we may come back and do this thing again down the road. But uh, Sounds good to me. Uh, again, to our listeners, we sure thank you for spending this time with us. And until next time, we'll see you around the bend. Thanks for listening to today's episode of SBM Studios Podcast. Until next time, this is Jason Baines reminding you to love God and love each other. It really is that simple, y'all.